All right, welcome back to Fat Chat by Body Magic. This is the first time I'm doing the episode in the new uh, set and studio here. I'm super excited. And the guest I've got today, who's a former number one draft pick uh, in the 1998 draft, he played for both Fremantle and uh, the Brisbane Lions. He's super successful since finishing football in his uh, business career, and I can't wait to get into all the uh, stuff for his career today. Please welcome Des Headland. Welcome, mate. Yeah, thanks, Jared. And um, uh, Body Magic, did you say? Body Magic, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those, those were the days, mate, not now. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Exactly. We need to get you back in for a session sometime, I reckon, Des. But yeah. uh, I'm super excited to have you in. But before we go into all of your career stuff, I've actually got like a little story for you. So uh, you wouldn't know this, but you're actually part of like a really significant life event for me. Okay. Yep. Super, like, I'm being dead set serious here. Quiet. Yeah, I know. So, uh, I'll paint a picture. This is the story. So, pretty much, it's uh, it's 2004. I'm eight years old. Uh, I go down to the uh, the deli. I lived in Bibber Lake, grew up Bibber Lake. You weren't there, don't worry. But uh, anyway, so we go down there. Uh, there's a news agent. There's this box of uh, red football cards, right? And I'm not really into football at this stage. But then I'm, I'm with my mum and she's like, oh, do you want a pack of footy cards? I was like, yeah, cool, sweet. So I grab a pack and I've opened a pack and you've started a genuine problem and addiction for me. So I don't know if I'm supposed to thank you or send you the bill for fucking all the therapy and everything <laughs> that it's actually caused me. But anyway, so this was the first pack of football cards that I ever, ever opened. Right? I've got it here, here with me. The first card I ever opened was a Des Headland common card 2014 coach series. Look at that. That one, mate. Look at that. That is the first card I have ever, ever. And it started, like I said, this addiction. Look, this is just one folder. I reckon I've got every year since 2004 almost full sets. I might get you to sign it now as well. As mate, we will do. Set. And I'm um, just looking at my stats. Didn't have a good year that year. <laughs> <laughs> what are the stats? What have we got on there? Oh, no, let's not talk about that one. <laughs> uh, but like I said, I don't know if I should thank you for it or actually send you the bill for all the thousands of well, dollars mate, of useless think, fucking cards I've bought I think maybe I need a percentage of this show, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair enough, this too. Is, uh, this is starting off. So. <laughs> Thanks, mate. No, good work. Well, that no, is, uh, so. I'm so happy that you've done that. So, like I said, a full circle moment for me. So, thank you so much. But good, pretty much good, from good that. Collection. Good collection. So. That's what started like my whole interest in football and everything so this is a full circle moment for me so thank you so much Des. No, I appreciate that mate I've had a, had a part to play in your in your football yeah career, yeah exactly right journey, so. exactly but um yeah it's uh I, I've it moved on from just being football cards to now I'm into harder stuff I'm into the basketball cards I got cricket cards anything there's a card for I'm fucking into it yeah, so good. thanks for that did you yeah. play with your mates and you throw them against a the wall and the closest one keeps it I oh, definitely not mate they're in the protector sleeves you don't want to yeah. mess up the edges I was a footy card <laughs> uh, like little dealer at school so if you need a card you, you come and see Jared oh yeah yeah yeah. I was there dealing him out the bag at school I have to, uh, um, have to go through some of my collection I'm sure scoey has got a few as well there yeah, yeah 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 exactly see, yeah, see yeah. what I can hand out to you <laughs> <laughs> well mate you had such an amazing career which I can't wait to uh, get stuck into so I want to paint a bit of a picture for anybody that maybe doesn't know uh, who you are Des uh, and uh, sort of uh, your early years where you came from um, where you were born, a bit about your family and how you got into football. So can you paint us a little bit of a picture about you growing up um, and a little bit about your family? Yeah, mate. So I, um, I was born here in Perth, good old Kingwood, King Edwards. Great. Where most of, most of Perth people are born in Subiaco and I was fortunate enough to play for Subiaco and the Waffles so it turned, yes. out, turned out pretty well in the end. But yeah, look, my, I grew up, I grew up as, a, as a child in Meriden, a little yep. country town. So uh, I was always around sport with my, my mum and my dad, my, my sister and my, my brothers and uncles and aunties that played, you know, just netball, football, soccer, you name it. So everything. T-ball, everything in the sport, in country towns, right? Sport, sport is the driving of, of the community. So, um, yeah, I started playing footy when I was about five or six with with the uh, the midgets back then was the Bulldogs team. Great. Four teams in Meriden and in the mid, in the midgets team and, yeah, build, build from there. And I moved to Perth when I was 11, mate, so... Come down to primary school here at Karanup Primary. Beautiful. Hence why I end up playing for Subiaco in, in that zone, that northern corridor. Um, my father, my father's a Yamaji Nyunga man, um, one of 18 people. Wow. Of 18 siblings, sorry. So a uh, big family, big strong connection here through through the southwest, but also through through the Shark Bay region as and well. And we all Midwest. gun footballers as well? Well, they like to say they were, especially... Yeah. especially 18, country. that feels a team. That's like... Yeah, well, 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 I think there was 11, 11, I got 11 aunties and seven uncles, uh, or wow. six uncles and one dad, obviously, but... Um, but yeah, they they oh, it's good good banter when they're playing darts and a few beers. <laughs> who, who was a better brother over the years? And my oldest uncle, Uncle Yui, always used to go because um, they well, we had that Meriden Karen up connection. 
So he either lived in Meriden or he grew up in Karen up here in Perth and it was vice versa. So um, my uncle played for Karen up Juniors um, back in the 70s and they did a tour every year to play at the MCG. So he always used to brag, mate, as a first headline to play at the MCG. So Beautiful. He beat me to it, but I said, doesn't count, mate. There wasn't an AFL game, <laughs> a AFL game. But yeah, so mate, I grew up, yeah, grew up Karen up, um, went to Scarborough High. Um, um, until, until year 11 and then my parents decided to move out towards Beach Bar, which is Lockridge area yep. um, near the Swan Valley and uh, went one year at high school at Lockridge and uh, met my beautiful wife there, Chantelle, to this day and um, yeah, three kids, Madison, Mason and Carson. Maddie's 22, Mason's 21 this year and, and Carson's 16. One, one more year to go at high school. He's at Guildford Grammar at the moment. So, Unreal. Um, yeah, mate, the kids are growing up and... Um, from there, I got drafted to Queensland. Over to Brisbane Amazing. Uh, and was there quick, someone... Quick snapshot. There's plenty in there, but... Yeah, yeah. And, like, I always find, like, when I'm speaking to any of, you know, high-performing anyone, particularly athletes, there's often, like, an older brother or an older cousin or an older someone that used to give you a little bit of a beat down all the way through the juniors, and that's sort of how you uh, levelled up your skills a little bit more. Uh, was there someone like that for you? Was there someone oh, there, was... there wasn't not so much in individual, but there was plenty of, plenty of older cousins. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So as I said, there's seven, um, seven dads got seven brothers and eleven, 11 sisters and plenty of older boy cousins. I'm, I'm sort of down the bottom of the age gap. Yeah. My dad's one of the youngest in the family, so you can imagine I've got I've got I've got first cousins that are older than some ma- some range. aunties and uncles. So yep. m- my nana and the daughters were pregnant together having kids. You joking? <laughs> <laughs> That's how big our family is, mate. And um, yeah, so I got plenty of older cousins that sort of used to belt me around the footy oval and um, in the backyard and, and mate, play makes footy, it cricket, basketball, you name hardens it. Hardens you up, hardens you up. Absolutely, for it's sure. Best way to learn, and um, you know you can't cry about it if you do. You get, you get a slap from the old boys inside to get back out there again. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And then what, at what point did you kind of realise that, oh, you're a bit better than the other cousins or better than, uh, you know, everybody else in your local juniors? And when did you start playing for Subiaco as well? Yeah, look, you, would, you always thought, yeah, you know, when you're a good footy player as a kid, you're a bit confident, but you wouldn't say it in front of your cousins because I'll turn oh, yeah. around and bail you. <laughs> 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 but, um, no, nah, look, it was probably um, 15, 16 when, um, you know, playing development sides for Subi and then got invited to as a 16 year old um, train for the Colts team and yep. um, played Colts all year as a 16 year old and then um, had a good year um, with the state 16s for WA and um, we, we actually won the carnival that year, that year beat Vic Metro and Vic Country and SA which was um, pretty exciting and then yeah got invited as a 16 turning 17 to train in the senior side for pre-season with Subiaco and was fortunate enough to play league footy all that year as a 17 year old and and that was in 98 and then got drafted that year as, as a number one draft pick. Yeah, Brisbane, great. So. so then tell us about the draft. And sorry, just on that, my yeah. first game of league for um, for Subi was, it was actually a special moment because it was the first game for my other first cousin, Shane Cole, who is rest in peace, who's passed away now. He um, made his league debut for Claremont as well at the same time. So Joking. He had all the Headland Cole family up I was going to say, he had Claremont everyone. Over. It was easy, it was easy game for everyone so to you get walk, to. So you walk to a Waffle game now, mate, and the crowd's pretty quiet. That was all, back in round one, 1998, Claremont versus Subi. That was a crowd, mate. It was, yeah, it was we, all family. So that's was awesome. That yeah. is it. I, I can imagine how uh, the, the tension that it would have been uh, from both <laughs> sides. It was split, don't worry. <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah. then going to the draft, um, were you 16, 17 when you went? to do all the draft stuff 17 yeah, 17 yeah okay yeah. cool so you went pick number one so you obviously would have you know uh, tested amazing and and your games that you would have played and everything leading up to that obviously were great can you tell us a little bit about that draft experience and then what the the effect of you know being the number one draft pick did you feel any extra pressure when you first started afl were you expecting to be number one um and so was there any other guys that were also in that draft as well that you ended up playing with yeah, no. Look, it was it was a bit of a surreal moment, really. Um, from the State 18s um, carnival in South Australia, they decided to um, create a documentary called The Draft. Yep. So it was myself, Brennan Favola. Oh, and so it's actually got the full. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's still out there. I think they show it now and then, but it's a bit cringy when you watch it yourself. Yeah, yeah. How, you look, <laughs> how you looked as a, as a pretty you know a raw seventeen year old that thought he could do anything. But, yeah, um, for sure. And then Adam Ram- Adam Ramanowskis as well. So the three of us was sort of a. Uh, a six month journey of of from the from the uh, from the state eighteens into the draft day and then leading on to your first game into the AFL the following year. Yeah. Um, so it was a bit daunting and so I sort of knew, you know, probably from then I was gonna be a high draft pick. 
And then yeah, it wasn't until later on in the year um, when you get invited to draft. And I was either fortunate or unfortunate. I um, I, had, I had an injury late in the, late in the year and um, didn't do any testing for the draft camp. Gotcha. So which, it was sort of like on your good. good. So you obviously good. just come off some really good form and you're going, oh, yeah, just use that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, ended up getting, I ended up getting compartment syndrome on both my shins. So I ended up having an operation at the, end of, at the end of the season. We, we lost to West Perth by a kick, um, you know, with a minute to go in, in a prelim. Um by three points, so we uh, missed out on the grand final for Subi in '98, and end up having having a surgery. And I sort of knew then that maybe Brisbane Lions were going to pick me up because they paid for the surgery. <laughs> God, did they really? <laughs> That's a pretty good indicator, <laughs> so, I reckon, that they were interested. Yeah, so that was um, yeah, you sort of like, okay, well, they're pretty keen. They had the first pick, and um, but yeah, so I went to the draft camp. Um, I actually went there first before the surgery. And where was and, it at that that year? Is it in Melbourne? Is in, it always it's in, in Melbourne? Melbourne yeah, yeah, I can't remember where it was, but I think it was like an old. Uh, a police academy somewhere um, just out of Melbourne towards um, Dandenong, Dandenong maybe, yeah. if I remember correctly. But um, but it was great, mate, like looking at all the players that you didn't really know at the time and then they got drafted. And, and you know, blokes in my draft that went on, you know, Lenny Hayes, you know, st- stands out the most, who probably would have been the most successful player in our draft. And then you get Brennan Favola, um, you know, yeah, great full stacked. forward. Yeah, yeah it's really, really good draft. Tyson Stengline, a premiership player for the Eagles. You know, Chad Fletcher, premiership player for the Eagles. Maybe <laughs> there's a bit of a theme there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, there was yeah, it was a um, yeah, real good draft. Um, Justin Longmuir, um, yeah, the current Freo coach. Lot, so he, he was uh, he was number two to Freo, and you know there were some great players that come out of that mate. And um, yeah, another one to say Adam Goods was the year before, so I was going to claim Goodsy, but he's, it was '97 draft. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So then when you rock up first day to Brisbane, the number one draft pick, I imagine. You know, there's this, um, you know, b- bit of expectation around you when you're first coming on in. That was sort of just on the verge of them going into this, you know, really dominant era for Brisbane. So this, the team was stacked and, the, and I imagine it was starting to build really nicely. you got Michael Voss, John O'Brown, um, you know, the list goes on about all the, mm-hmm. all the guys that were in that team. What was the early days of Brisbane like when you first rocking, rocking up? Uh, and how did the boys kind of receive you as this, you know, High and mighty number one uh, draft yeah, pick no, when no, you first rolled in. That's just been on his documentary, you know. <laughs> well, when you, mate, and 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 Scully would know this when you are your number one or pick sixty or seventy. Or as soon as you walk in those doors, you just you got to work harder than anyone else. You're going down to the bottom. Show, show yeah. your respect and and you know build you know make sure you deserve to be picked in the play on that team. So yeah, what, being a number one draft pick didn't didn't mean much. It's more of a, a name called out. Um, I think what really helped and uh, over here in Dublin, we love our footy, right? Yeah, and there's no doubt. But I remember. Being number one draft pick in Melbourne, going for dinner after with mum, dad, and my sister, and, and, and my wife Chantelle, and yeah, like people coming up shaking your hand. I had no idea; they wouldn't even know who I was, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. But the best thing about um, being number one draft pick and going to Queensland is you can walk the streets anywhere you want. No one knows who you are. No one cares. Three, four, <laughs> three, four pages, pages in after a game, it's a little article about the Brisbane Lions, all about Michael Voss or, or Jason McManus. Yeah, totally. So I guess there isn't that, you know, that overhanging <laughs> no, media pressure right. and no, everybody was, chatting was, to. It would have been to be a number one draft pick. The best team to go to would be Brisbane Lions, Gold Coast, GWS, Sydney. Yeah. If if you don't like the hype, and I think the way Jesse Hogan proved that. Yes. So Melbourne back to Freo and now he's at GWS and playing his career best form um, in a way where he's sort of, I don't think he really likes that limelight. Um, I don't know him personally, but he just outside looking in and you know, just proves that you know he had that sort of stigma about him and now he's playing some good footy at GWS and um, but yeah, but some people love it. Just you know, if you're in Melbourne, number one draft pick, you take control and off you go. So, so do you kind of wish that you weren't number one draft pick, or are you happy that it all? No, hell no, mate. That's no? a good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Still good. Do you to think that would have yeah. changed how you went about anything early on, though, or because nah, you reckon nah. because you're at Brisbane and there wasn't as much of that sort of pressure as what you see with yeah, you know yeah. the other teams that that was all right? Or? It was good, yeah, because going to Brisbane, and um, you know, having a lot of players that um, you know were champion players from the Brisbane Bears and the Fitzroy Lions. Yep. I got there a year after the merge, mm-hmm. so it was a real and the merge year they finished last. So Brisbane Bears year before '96 lost a prelim by a kick, so they had a real good team. You know, obviously talking about Vossiak and Manus, Nigel Lapp and Marcus Ashcroft and you know Alistair Lynch, just legends of the game, right? And yeah. For the Bears, and then you bring the Fitzroy Lions boys in. The, I think they bring eight of their best players up into the team, and um, you know you got to sort of come together and mix and match, and you know have a good coach that can you know mend the team together and. And build that towards success, and they finished last in '98, yeah, um, '97, '98, and um, yeah, that's where they picked me up. And so I got there my first year, '99, and 
I muck around and say there's two people that changed the, the, the club of the Brisbane Lions, and that's Lee Matthews and Des Hedlund. Absolutely, they did. Yes, <laughs> yes, we rocked yes. Up, we, rocked up day, we rocked up day one together for pre-season, and the club was turned around. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Oh, mate, so, lethal Lee, mate, he, he was... And that um, was day one yeah. that Lee was coached from first day that you rocked that yeah, you rocked yeah, up? Both. Yeah, both. I met him the first time at the draft camp. I'm um, not draft, at the draft, Scary? Actually. Oh, he's, intimi- like, he's intimidating, but he's, like, in terms of... Yeah, he's scary. It's Lee Matthews, right? Yeah. So you're sort of... You're nervous, but... Um, you know, we had our 20 year reunion um, the last three years for the three Pete, and um, you know, so we, yeah, first time I've really had a good conversation with him at the pub, and you know, in terms of not being that nervous, and not having nervous to young worry about if he's going to pick yeah. me this week or not, yeah, just yeah. just a man to man conversation, what's what's happening in life these days, and you know, it was sort of a, a good of a um, you know a refresher, and yeah, a bit of a homecoming for me in terms of leaving the club as a young 22 year old and um, not being around him for the next 10 years, and then. Going back there after twenty years for the reunion was was pretty special and open arms and you know, it was just like just like you left you know nothing changed at That's all. That's awesome. So it was great. And just on Lee as well, I love hearing uh, spray stories. Were you on the receiving end of yeah, any couple. absolute uh, scorches from Lee? I reckon he could dish him out. <laughs> oh mate, he's, he's he, he does, but he's he's stern in the way he does it. You know, so you know little things like you rock up, rock up, and you know get a stare at your coach every time he talks to you. And you I put my head down, wanted to spit a, spit a bit of water out, and he just blast me in front of the group. But, <laughs> like it's not nothing real serious, you know. But he just, you just gotta, he just you know, demands respect, right? So, but he, um, yeah, he definitely had his moments. So early on with Brisbane, uh, how long did it take to get your first game? Were you pretty much straight in the side to start off with, or did you have to really grind away for that first year that you were there? Or yeah, so I rocked up as I said, I had that compartment syndrome surgery, and so yep. I was in preseason, I mean rehab for the first. Up to Christmas. Oh, is that right? Wow. Um, just on the bike, and they must have thought you're fucking like yeah, no. they rated you so highly. You <laughs> no. they're going, yep, no worries. We'll take yeah, the surgery. We'll take the surgery, get him sorted. So I was virtually um, sliced down the middle of your um, in between your muscle and your and your shin bone. Yeah. So it's just a build up of um, I know it's calcium. I'm not sure what it is, but I never had it again. So yeah. I was a young seventeen year old when I had it, but um, they fixed that up straight away. And yeah, so I was it um, in pre season on the bike, rehab, swimming until I could start running after Christmas and. Um, build, build my fitness up from there, and then once as you when you miss a big big bulk of training, I got back on the track and then tore a quaddie for another yeah. I think six weeks for the year, and slowly got back and so didn't play till my first game around round nine, right in in the Queensland comp and for the Lion Cubs they used to call it. If, I don't think they call that now. They're playing VFL. Uh, they're playing VFL now, but yeah, the Lion Cubs. So it was it was good fun. Yeah. Um, and then round thirteen, yeah, was my first game round one. So and what was the first? Game? Tell me about the first game. How'd you go? Yeah, it was good. It was against uh, Sydney, SCG, big big plugger. Tony mm-hmm. Locker was out there running around and Alistair Lynch um, Who were you playing matched on? up on him. Uh, Brad Seymour, I played played in the forward line. He came up on me and um, good good halfback flank defender and back pocket defender. And yeah, it was, mate, it was exciting, good Any time. Any snags? Yeah, kicked a goal my first oh, game. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, first that. kick was a goal. Snags are good. First goal of the game too, but typical Des Hedlund style. Simon Black picks it up. I'm on the outside running through. <laughs> and ball over to him, mate. Open goal, square go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, yeah, that was yeah, a special moment, right? Like your first game, first kick goal, and then, and we end up winning the game, um, which was pretty special. And yeah, obviously the family flew over from WA and um, were there for it. And you know, it was yeah, just a great memory. Yeah, beautiful. And then the team starts to you know really start get rolling and and winning games and and being really successful over that sort of you know 2000 2004 um, period there. So were you in the side pretty consistently all throughout there? Sort of 2001, you played a lot of football, but then you got dropped just before the grand final. Can you tell us a little bit about that um, and what that season was like and how that how that felt and what 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 that experience was like? Yeah, look, so you, you get drafted as a kid and you you got to learn how to become a professional athlete straight away. I, I sort of relied on my natural ability um, yeah. and I was pretty raw in that sort of, um, as, a, as a young kid. And so, yeah, like I, I had to learn, you know, basic, you know, diet and um, how to work hard. So what were you doing? What were you doing with your diet? I was just eating anything, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I remember Alistair Lynch pulled me up one day after a training session and had a sandwich and I grabbed the meat pie straight away and, and a chocolate milk. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are you pull, doing? Pull your head in, mate. You know, what are you we doing like Des, but we like it if there's a little bit less of him. Yeah, yeah, and little basic things like that because you, you had a big session, so you'd be hungry, you know. So yeah, um, but yeah, so I just sort of learned no, no like basic things like no butter on your bread, and it's not basic to normal people. I wouldn't say normal people, not people that are in the, in the athletic, athletic world, but um, you know, no butter on your bread, um, taking cheese off your sandwiches, and just you know, lo- low, low. Uh, Load, what do you call it? 
high low milk sort of thing. Well, you know, I so. guess it's kind of like uh, I think it's a it's much better now with the guys that I work with for you know all the training that I do with them in the off season in terms of like what the clubs help them with the education side of things when it comes to like you said oh, your food, better now, your performance, your yeah. diet, all that sort of thing, everything else yeah. except for the football stuff. I imagine it probably wouldn't have it would have been a lot more well, raw I think back this, then. I think, and, now, I think now if you're if you're a, you know, a talented player, 15, 16, you're in a sort of a program, yeah, of academy program or a next generation program, and they sort of they prep you, really build you whether you make that. it or not. They they prep you for that, you know, in terms of that professionalism and yeah. about your diet, nutrition, and um, you know, what the, what you expect when you walk in the door. Where, you know, I walked in the door as a, as a seventeen year old in, in Brisbane, thinking I was just going to do what I did in, in Perth and yeah, chop up, just chop up and mm. play footy. And then the blokes in my position, are Jason Ackermanis and Nigel Lappin, and you know, and those sort of guys, I'm going, oh, hang on, how am I going to get a game here? Yeah, 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 yeah. these guys are dominating the AFL, you know, and. Um, yeah, so it took it took time, and um, but yeah, but I, yeah. I, hey, legends, how you doing? If you wouldn't mind, this will take literally twenty seconds of your time. If you could either subscribe or follow on any of the streaming platforms that you're watching or listening to the podcast with Des on, that would be great. It really goes a long way into getting more guests on each and every episode. Uh, and uh, if you could also rate the Fat Chat podcast a big fat five stars, that would really, really mean a lot to me and show a lot of support. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, it takes twenty seconds of your time bloody love your work let's get back into the episode with des in and out of the side 99 in and out of the side 2000 um just played games when i could i tried my hardest as you would right but as i said my professionalism wasn't there and then 2001 um yeah played all year 20 uh didn't play the first two games and played 20 straight games um leading into around like, up to around 22 and then yeah matchups for the first final um i think they wanted to tag someone and uh, put Robert Copeland in um, for the tag role, and yeah, they kept the same team for the rest of the final series. Oh, I couldn't couldn't break my way in again. That is actually so rough. Eh? But, but I won a flag. I won a flag for the Lion Cubs. Yes, great. So I didn't, didn't play one game all oh, year. Oh, the reserves won that yeah, as well. Didn't, yeah, didn't play one game all year. But the rule was if the, if the AFL team were playing and you, you played, could get in you, there. you can play a game. So we played the first final. The boys, the, the reserves lost. Had to play off in a prelim. Yeah. Which and the, the Lions won, so they had a week off into the prelim. Gotcha. So then I had to sit out the week after, hoping the, the Cubs won the uh, reserves, won the prelim, which they did. So the, gra- the Quaffle Grand Final was the, the weekend of the prelim of the AFL, so I got to play in that. And Great. It was good fun. Were you an emergency or anything like that? It was emergency, the, yeah. So I've done the whole, yeah, I won, yep. Lee comes after the game, the reserves game. Well done, mate. Good work. Just make sure you don't head out with the boys tonight. Yeah. <laughs> be ready for training. <laughs> Big week coming up. Like, oh, That's even worse. You, I didn't might even, be a chance. you didn't even get to go do the bloody celebration <laughs> with the team and you didn't get to I'll, play the next week. I Fuck. might be a chance next week in the big one. You know? But um but yeah, no, I'd done the whole done the whole the, the training all week, done the whole parade, a grand final parade, warmed up with the boys just in case someone got injured yeah. um in pre warm up and Everyone walked in after the after kicking warm-up. everybody's ankles and yeah. just like <laughs> making some dibbits like in the grass weird, and it's stuff. It's a weird or? feeling, like, and you're so you're pumped for for your teammates, right? Because you know it's a big grand final, I won, and you, and you sort of sitting there going, oh, "I wish I was there with them," you know, at the same time. But after the warm up, you walk in and, and everyone's putting their jumpers on, and I'm putting my suit and tie back <sighs> on, and up I go on the grandstand and crack a beer. Oh, <laughs> oh that is yeah. And, so and cheer the boys on, and yeah, they the, that O one was a close game, and then I think it's halfway through the third quarter. Yeah, Brizzy started pushing away against Heston and, and got over the line in the end. So when you're sitting there and you sort of touched on it a little bit just then, what was your feeling that obviously you're happy that the team's, you know, success oh, and everything, but yeah. was there any sort of like, fuck, that could have been me? or? Yeah, when it sort of pushed me to the O2 season I had yeah. in a way, so it was probably, you know, Which as, is what as, I really much, want to as know much about. as you wanted to be there, um, for me individually, um, it was probably a good thing for me, you know yeah. what I mean? Because it really taught me that you know you can't have things easy in life. Well, I think you can really go two ways with, when something like that happens to you Absolutely. in whatever career it might be, sporting or or anything that you can either get completely deflated and you know done and and yeah. you're you're down and out about it, or like what you did, use it as a driver and motivation to get back there or uh, you know prove yourself, get back in the team and, and you know perform really well. So the part that I really really want to know about today is in between that 2001 2002 season. 2002, you come out and play arguably probably the best football that you know you played that year, and also part of the premiership side. Can you tell me exactly what you did performance-wise, um, how you changed your mindset, anything else around sort of your wellness and health that you were working on in between that preseason to then lead you into having such a successful year in 2002? Yeah, look, it's um, a lot. Um, the O1 missing out in the grand final was a big, big kick up the arse, right? So. And then you know, sitting down and having you know Craig Lambert, who's a real 
real great friend of mine and, and a massive mentor and, and, and Michael McLean as well, Majo. Um, really you know, shot me between the eyes in terms of what you need to do to, to become at the, the next level. What do they say? Um, just my work ethic, really, and um, you know what are you doing after hours and what do you put into your body. And um, you know, I sat down with those guys and then Justin Lepich, Akamanis, Michael Voss and Craig Starsevich, who was the, uh, the fitness coach who's now coaching the AFLW team, um, you know, grabbed me and said, look, mate, if I was you, don't, don't go home over the off-season. And I was the sort of bloke was I always wanted to go home as any opportunity I could, right back to Perth and yep. see the family. But um, I had to sacrifice, you know, what, what I wanted to get out of my footy career. And um, you know, I won really, really um, you know, it hurt, but I was also happy for the team. But you know, sitting down and, and getting getting those real respectful teammates and mates that you respect so highly actually tell you face to face that you know if you don't first if you keep doing what you're doing you're out of the AFL in two years yeah you know you haven't got you, 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 you gotta you gotta pull your head in train harder eat better um actually live and breathe you know this game 100 percent of the time and um so i i started that from that moment on probably we celebrated the, the of I won, course, I won yeah. as you do you got the, <laughs> the, the uh, best and fairest night and then you I went home for a couple of weeks, um, just to, and then I cut back, and that was it. I was knuckled down, and um, you know, train in the off season. I trained for the first time with some players from from Brisbane, and and that was know. like stuff outside of the club that you. Yeah, did. so yeah. I, I tagged along with with Michael Voss, um, Akin Manis, and Justin Lepich, which was ran by by uh, Craig Stars, which I didn't realise that those sort of players, the champions, are training. This is what I'm talking about, but when I was you know, yes. 19, 20, like a week after they finished. You know, and back to I mean, full on, yeah, full on training, and you know, we'll, we'll spewing up. You know, this, I'm talking about, you know, late sounds like body magic session. Yeah, That's so what mid, it sounds mid October, <laughs> all the way through to January, just every training session spewing up. So outside of what we're doing at the footy club, you know, so it's the first time I learned how to push my body in terms of, you know, you can, you can spew up and still still sprint and still run, keep going. And put, what, put your fingers down your throat, go again. Absolutely. You know? and then, <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, I didn't know. Great message, Dan. I kid you not, man. I, that was very true, you know. So, you know, passed out a couple of times and the boys are picking me up. Come on, let's go. You know, this is not. And then they're just machines. I'm going, how am I going to get to that? Who's the hardest trainer out of the, out oh, of the Michael, guys? That, yeah, Michael Voss. Michael Voss. Man, Sam. Yeah, yeah. He, he is an animal, mate. Like, he, one of the best blokes you ever meet in your life. And I mean, what were you doing? Were you doing running stuff? Were you doing just weights all, or, or gym? No, or no, no gym. Just just all cardio. All yeah. cardio and a bit of sprint work. So, you know, 12, 200 sort of sort of running style, so, um, and good rest in between, three, four minute rest, you're sort of doing them at a pretty high intensity pace, after the sixth one, you're probably a bit delirious. Yeah, and, absolutely, you know, cooking little, it up. Lactic yeah. acid to set in, you're trying to finish the next six, and you're pretty cooked, yeah, so, um, but yeah, that, that alone, and that just build, build my capacity in terms of, you know, how hard I could train, and that was my best pre-season, I was always at the front of the group running, and I was always a good runner as a kid, yeah. you know, so I was always... So then when you did that bit extra, they yeah. just really, really made you stand out. Yeah, it was good, and then... Um, I was unlucky leading into pre uh, pre season, O two. I, I did a quaddy. I always done quads for some reason, and yeah, spent six weeks on the sidelines. So I missed the first six games of O two. Yep. And um, I tell Simon Black, if I played the first six, I might have told the Brownlow off. Him. You might have. You did because <laughs> what did you get? You got like sixteen votes that year. For yeah, the Brownlow, sixteen. Hey? Sixteen finished top five. I think it was six, whatever it was. But but it was yeah because it wasn't until like mid to late of the year, and I started stealing votes away from Blackie, and I was like, oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna steal it <laughs> off <laughs> him. <laughs> Said, what, nah, did he, what did he finish off with? When had, I think he finished 24. Oh, he, he smashed it. You're down the road. That was, yeah, yeah like you said, he he's done his six games. That was it. Yeah, he made, he made he fed me all day. Like I, I was I was getting three Brownlow votes and he might have got one or two, but he fed me most of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I was just finishing them off, you know. Umpire, umpire's got to learn to look at the What did you, you got like 30 more. goals or something, hey, in those, in that little great yeah, patch as well? I think so. Yeah, like I don't count stats too much, but. Oh, well, we can. I, well, last week, Bri <laughs> that was funny. Brisbane put out, a, I got tagged in a post. Brisbane got put out a, um, I think on their socials saying that um, I'm the only Brisbane player to uh, vote, vote, vote six games in a row. Yep. Yeah, so I don't know how that worked, but anyway. So, so you just uh, message Simon Black and just let him nah, know. I should have. Well. Should have definitely should have. <laughs> should have. Uh, no, you sort of look at it and go, nah, all right, I won't share that. It's a shame. Yeah, and then <laughs> leading up to the 2002 grand final, um, was there any feelings of, all right, I've got to stay, stay keeping, or were you pretty confident that whole year because of how well everything had panned out that, yeah, I'm in the side, I'm going to be playing, and then how was the game and how did yeah, you look play like, on the day? Uh, yeah, it was, mate, it was great. Like we, the whole year was, it was a fan. I still, I still think about that O2 year daily, to be honest with you, as a footy player and Scott will, will tell you this, that there's moments in your footy life that you, you always look back on and think, I wish that happened every, 
every game, but you know things don't, and, and footy's a funny game in that sort of way. But um, that O two season was, um, yeah, was pretty pretty special. Um, the, sometimes I had to pinch myself in terms of the caliber of players that I, that were my teammates, you know. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and you, you still, oh, actual legends for Absolutely, like yeah, you know, so. co- from coaching all the way down Ab- to yeah, yeah, all the way down the hundred percent. Yeah, and then we did in terms of being selected for the grand final, like the actual day, like it didn't even cross my mind. I just went there, just playing good footy week in, week out, enjoying footy, enjoying life. Um, you know, had had our daughter Maddie up, you know, she was in Brizzy, and then we're pregnant for our son Mason at the time. Oh, I wasn't, my wife was, <laughs> and um, so it was yeah, a real good, it was a real good year, and um, yeah, so the night two was lucky enough and fortunate enough to to play in that granny and. I um I ended up getting tagged in the grand final. Did you really? So I, Who was on you? Carl Carl Stan, Stanford Stanford. Never heard of him. So <laughs> he um oh funny so the week before I don't pump my tires up too much. I go no pump it. Go. We, I, want, um, I want the biggest pump you can we, give me. Um, we beat Port Adelaide who for the, like three years in a row probably the best team you know, home and away season. Finished on top of the ladder. Was we always got them in the prelim for a couple of years and. I know four they end up getting brizzy in the end, but um, we would play them in a prelim. Um, what I have, I think I had about thirty three and three, so I did all right. You know, beautiful. Got the boys into the granny. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that, 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 absolutely. I'd and be then, yeah, that. and then I let, I let Vossie and Blackie and Nack and the boys do the wrestling grand final. Day. I got, I got tagged. Yeah, great, great. <laughs> I've done, I've done it, boys. I've got us here. Yeah, did the hard job the week before yeah. for sure. And then yeah. when, when the siren goes, two thousand two, you're a premiership player now. After all that, you know, change in all your work ethic that you've done that whole year, was it? A relief, or was it excitement, or a bit of both, or what? What was kind of the feeling around all that with it, all it, the work you had to put it in? It was a it was a real blur. Like, be honest with you, like it went that that quick yeah. in terms of the celebration afterwards, and you, know, you, you sit back now and think about it. Like, it was yeah, it's an amazing feeling. That first when the siren goes, and it was such such a close game. I don't realise was we're up by three points with like a minute or two to go, and Acker kicked that famous point. Yes. Snap and it went the other way. It would have come to me. Yes. <laughs> you reckon you could have yeah, got no, it? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> luck, of, luck of the bounce, eh? But um, in the um, in you know, obviously the grand final shots they have on the, the big yes. um, uh, the big shots they have and, and it's all framed up and you, you see the photos and then Zaka running around on there trying to pick him up. Which is yeah, good. beautiful. So could have been that, the other that way mo- around. That moment was pretty. Well, that was to you knew we had it then. Nine points up with probably a minute to go. And um, yeah, so once the siren going, you sort of just this massive relief, and that f- first probably five seconds is, you know, just oh, I can't, of, I can't, yeah, can't, I can't even imagine what yeah. that would feel like. It'd be awesome. Yeah, it was no, it was, it was amazing. And then yeah, you get up, get your medal, and um, yeah, you celebrate with your team, your family. Um, yeah, you can't, you can't beat it, mate. It was unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's um, that's bloody awesome. So then, from two thousand and two, you were traded from Brisbane two thousand two to Free. Fremantle. Yep. How did that come about? Did you want to come back home, or was it something that the club kind well, of was of, in the talk in sort the of a, um, talks with, or what? It was a, like a massive decision, right? So mm. we, um, as I said, we're both. My wife, she was, she was twenty one at the time with two kids. Yeah. So um, no, we both decided to come home and bring the family home. Yep. Um, you know, have family support around her quite a bit as, as footy players, and you know we're constantly travelling, or you know we're always down the footy club. For sure, yeah. we're home. We're home late. We're going early, so um, to have her family support and structure around the two kids was the main reason why we left um, to come back to Perth. And, um, and I, I didn't, I didn't bother where I went. It was either Fremantle or the West Coast. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't barrack for any of the teams. I was a North Melbourne supporter, hard North Melbourne supporter as a kid growing up. So. Um, it was just yeah, we'd get back to the west and being obviously married and then moving to the northern suburbs. Yeah, yeah. Um, the funny story is actually getting back to Freo when I got traded. Um, I had to get my cousin to show me how to get down to Freo. Yeah. I had no idea how to get down there, so I would have went there once in my life growing up. You know, you're joking. At a crocodile farm down there. I remember going on an excursion one day. In Fremantle. In Freo, yeah. There's yeah. a crocodile farm in Fremantle. Esplanade, yeah. Really? <laughs> Gotta Google that, man. So, um, yeah, it was yeah. <laughs> The, yeah, is, is that, that what it is? Was, yeah. Is that little creatures? Is that what yeah. it was? I did yeah. not know that. There you go. Yeah, so um, yeah, so I had to get my cousin actually show me how to get down to Freo. So wow, yeah, which um, yeah, but that's, that that was good. I, I yeah, it was awesome. So. That's great. And then when you walk into Fremantle first day, obviously you've just been in Brisbane for the last you know uh, few seasons. Super successful team, probably a bit of a different vibe at that um, time for Fremantle. What was it like walking on in? Who you tight with? Um, but, and what was sort of like early days um, Fremantle like for you? Um, was there sort of expectation for you to come in and be like a real well, well, like you know, leader you know as well? You know, you spoke about being number draft and going to Queensland. And yes, it was it was good. Yeah. So you, you're over there five years. You forget how much footy they love footy here in WA. Definitely. So I remember my boy, my boy was born October two weeks after the grand final, and um, at St John I got in the Subi, and I walked out with my daughter, 
and there was cameras there taking photos and stuff. And I was oh. like, what's going on here? You know, just because they wait for you looking back <laughs> yeah, like this, going. Just because my boy was born, you know. And I'm like, what's? And I was like a week back in Perth after leaving Brizzy and. Um, that, that that moment on, I was like, hang on, what have, have I done the right thing it's here? Totally, yeah, <laughs> Can I totally reverse that trade or not? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. But anyway, so, um, yeah, look, and that, that, I had to get used to that media straight away of the two-town team. And um, I think Freo was probably good because West Coast is WA, right? That's, mm. the, that's not let's not lie about it. West Coast is a WA team. And um, the media really, you know, focus and, and support. And at that time as well. I mean, Freo yeah, was only, right, only yeah, around so. for not even But even to this day. And, um so going to Freya was a bit more quieter in a way, you know, the team that's sort of up and coming and yes. not much success and still obviously not successful in terms of premiership and final series. But, um, but yeah, look, I, it was great going to Freya because I, I played with a couple of boys and grew up with a couple of boys from the club. So, you know, played a lot of juniors against and with Paul Hazelby. Anthony Grover grew up with Groves. Yeah. Um, you know, played you know, State 18s with a few of the boys from there like Justin Longview and, and others. So it was, um, yeah, it was good to come back and see some familiar faces and, and, and get stuck into playing back home in WA and absolutely yeah. having all the family every game that you're going to. Yeah, that was good. I thought they got a bit. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize sort of tickets for. Everyone. Yeah, that's right. I didn't realize how much <laughs> how much that actually uh, how much how much uh, what's the word for it? Time consuming. Got to be respectful, that is. respectful here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now nah, look, because exactly, you know, Sam is ringing up for fifty tickets to game. He's like, <laughs> 50 come tickets. on, I can't give you fifty. Like, yeah. Just just give us uh, block. Uh, just so, give us block nineteen. Yeah, yeah we'll have the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, virtually. So anyway, I just, I just, I just rang Dad. So look, you deal with this crap, and you can sort. That's your job for the rest of the next. Whenever I'm playing footy for now on. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, do you have any like real memorable games for Fremantle that stand out that you're like, oh, that was uh, that was a pearl or any good well, stories? I mean, I remember or close one, ones? Yeah, it was. Um, and it was. I was sort of like, um, I was a bit confused. Obviously, coming from Brisbane and um, having so much success, and um, you know, and having that real, um, you know, that oh, what's the word for it? Just that dog, you know, dog eat dog sort of attitude in terms of just you know, you, when you cross that white line, you, you're into it. You're following Michael Voss, right? Mm. And then Simon, well, you, you're, Simon, you're a hard player. Simon Black, and then you, you just got to fall in line behind him. I remember a funny story. I remember Vossy one time we played against Carlton at the Gabba, and um, I just ran over the footy. I thought I went hard, right? Yeah. Vossi's first, she grabbed me, jumper punched me and said, if you want to play in this fucking team again, you put your head over the board. <laughs> in the middle of the game, I'm going, yeah, no worries, mate. <laughs> you know, so that, that, that just typifies you know, what, what Vossi in terms of the, the respect and Terrifying, what he wanted yeah. every single player on that field to be like, you know, and um, and that you had to be at your, you know, your elite and mental, your mental attitude, that'd be right at the top, so... Um, but yeah, back at Freo, probably the most memorable game in terms of where I felt a bit was the 0- 03, our first year, and we, we made our first finals for forever against Essendon, yep. and we lost, and, that, and we're walking off the ground, the crowd's, the crowd's doing a standing ovation. Great. Going, <laughs> I'm just going, what, what's going we, on just here? Lost, we just lost the semi-final, <laughs> <laughs> or, or elimination <laughs> final it was, yeah, elimination final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the whole, the whole crowd stood up. A little up. bit different, no yeah. one, no one, no one, it was a close game, we lost, but... The standing Just happy to be yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> well done, boys. You played your first final and you lost. Standing ovation. The old Great. free amount of faithful. <laughs> I don't think it's like that now. I reckon no. if they lost in the final now, they're not yeah. getting a standing so that, ovation So that was anymore. a good memory of my first year, I'll tell you that much. So, yeah, it was, yeah that's in a good way. That's good. Uh, that that's just good. proves the free amount of, you know, the, the faithful, they've had a long, long, you know, Unsuccessful sort of absolutely. Fellowship. Oh, they're, they're, it's um, uh, it, what's it called uh, in, endurance. It's just yeah, enduring, absolutely. enduring as a free supporter. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and one of my favourite players uh, that you would have played with was uh, Jeff Farmer. Have yep. you got any whiz stories about um, you know, anything that he did in the game that was just amazing? Um, or oh, uh, tell us a little bit about him because yeah, he was he's one of my favourites to watch. Like what? What can I? What can I tell him? More like, oh, mate, like what, you can say whatever you like. You go. No, you well, go was, mate, he's, he's he's special. Right? He's one of the. If I were to pick one of my favourite players of all time, he's he's in top top five, easy top three, if that. So he just just things he done on the footy field um, to change a game, and um, he has to do one or two things a game, and all of a sudden, you know, he's um yeah, he's put two scores on the board, or he's. He's made two tackles. He took a spectacular mark, or um, just just him just being a, around. So good to watch. Mate, he's just and always he, highlights. And he's he's one of the funniest blokes you ever meet in your life. So Is he's he? and he's light on the field as well at times. So he's sort of he's does good he away. chat away? Or Absolutely. No? Yeah. Yeah. He's, Were you he's much of a talker? He's one of no? the best at times. Yeah. Depends how it's going. Well, what, have you have you got any good ones? <laughs> 
No, not on, not on the show. <laughs> <laughs> just abuse mate, the, from the, Daz. Mate, just the abuse. Worst, the, not the worst, but Daryl White was the biggest sledger you could ever meet. He just, to the, especially to the umpire. You, you could actually, back in those days, <laughs> you could say the umpire was a fair game. And they, and, they, and they would turn around and give it That's back. That's what it should be now, honestly. <laughs> they should have to couple the They would turn around and give it back to you just as good, mate. <laughs> and just like, yep, yeah, well done. Move on. <laughs> they should be honestly yeah. like that now. Yeah. It really has to be. They need to be a bit tougher, the umpires. No, um, everyone can hear it now. All the yeah, yeah, yeah that's careful. right. Yeah. Um, so at Frio, you also sort of had um, some patches where you were in, you know, in and out of injury. And I heard that you were one of the best trainers when it came to if you weren't able to be on the track with the team, everything outside you were doing with boxing, um, all your gym work. Can you tell us a little bit about that and I guess your mindsets of where the times that you were injured, what you were really focusing on um, and what you got up to during those, during those periods? Yeah, well you, you you hate to be branded like that because yeah. you want to be on the field. Of course, yeah. You know, but yeah, it used to happen all the time. And look, I just probably come back from my Brisbane days in terms of saying the way you know, the, the Scott brothers and you know Marcus Ashcroft. I remember running laps with him one day, and I was after two laps, I was and I was fit, just yeah. could not keep. Is that him. that's at Ashcroft's? Yeah, we'll, dad, yeah, dad, yeah, yeah. So um, he was a great player, Marcus. Um, most one of the most durable player and. A good runner, good skill, played 300 games. Yeah. Until Will gets 19 touches in a quarter, yeah. then he's made it. Did you see the goal that he kicked, though? Yeah, that's good. That was, was pretty good. Was yeah, right that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, he's, he's a special player, that young kid. who will be something good. The AFL with him and Nick Dacos and uh, you know, a couple of other young superstars, you know, good generation coming through. Yeah, definitely. But, um, yeah, look, I was, unfortunately, my last sort of four years, I played 15 games. So I was in and out of the I was... I was unlucky to be born with bipar patella. I don't know mm-hmm. if anyone knows. I just got two kneecaps on both knees. So Do you really? Yeah, and um, really. didn't know that until you think that would be an advantage. Yeah, you think so, wouldn't it? Mm. Until it until it cracks on you, <laughs> which happened to me. So they both yeah, it cracked. So because they're not joined together, it's just joined by I don't know the scar tissue or whatever it is they call it. But um, it wasn't bone. And one day playing against Richmond, um, just landed on my knee like you're doing a game of footy, and yeah, the one on my left side cracked open. <sighs> and, Spent the rest of the year out on that, and they fixed that up pretty well. And then um, the following year, <laughs> ironically, I done my right one. Wow! And the right one's still still out that way. Was so it any particular move? That I don't don't know. Don't just know? just diving for the ball and getting up. You do it you know, ten times a game yep. your whole life, and um, and then yeah, just couldn't. I couldn't train like I could. I could do a one off mm-hmm. and be well, and then the next day or next week, I'm it's a bit like having bone bruising. Um, you just got to wait for it to settle down and. So yeah, that happened for my last four years, and yeah, so I was in the gym, mate. Yeah. Rehab. So got got into swimming. Obviously, always done boxing throughout my career, and just got heavily into boxing, and just um, you know, done some you know circus throughout the gym, and all, all, I just focused on what I, what I was taught at Brizzy as a young, seventeen to twenty two year old. Most of the times, the boys that are now they do you know development players, one to four year age, so they're not doing the whole sessions outside. They're doing in and out. So I was just focus on those young kids in terms of. You know, showing them what I was taught like um, as a young kid. So, who, who were some of the young ones that you were working so, with? So, Matty the Boar was in there um, at times. Chris Main, Mike, Mike Sonny Walters. Yep. So, yeah, and then when I retired in 10 then Sonny but he had to go back to Swan Districts for attitude. So, <laughs> um, so he went down for a year, and Ross. This, I wasn't there when Ross was there, and yeah, Ross taught him a bit of a lesson, and it was good for Sonny, right? And yeah, now, now look at his career, that's that's an amazing career, you know. So, uh, but yeah, there was blokes in and out of the, out of that rehab and. They used to hate when I used to get next to them and just go for it, really. So yeah. is there anyone that you hated? I know you're into your boxing big time uh, and sparring. Was there anyone that you'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, no, I'm not sparring with them today? Or, uh, was, or was that, I feel I like that no. was you in the gym that everybody's going, I don't want to be messing with Des. No, <laughs> no, you, yeah, like anyone, but yeah, Big Groves, could, Big Anthony Groves could go. throw him. Yeah, yeah. he's... Um, and he's you know six three, six four, good solid size on him. Well, I had Ryan Crowley on talking about the yeah. two thousand and five game over in London, where yeah. uh, pretty much Andrew Embley comes storming onto the bus after their, <laughs> you know, uh, after their biff on the field, and Andrew Grover said, Mm-mm, "Not, sir, yeah, not today, sit, sit down." <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I think that kind of shows that yeah, nobody, <laughs> nobody fucked with Groves. Yeah, yeah. Nah. And, and yeah, and Groves a bit, a bit like Scully, same sort of height, could run all day. Yeah, probably a bit. bit, bit bigger shoulders than, than Scully had but yeah Will, Will Schofield's <laughs> sitting in the background here for anybody that doesn't know that's why he keeps getting a mention but he's <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah no, he they're, they're gross he could pack a punch absolutely and he was he was fast as well so he um he had that fast twitch tibers about him uh, yep. fibers about him and yeah, he was good to spar at times and yeah it's good yeah great and then upon sort of like reflecting back uh, on your career as a whole in terms of you know your performance and um your um you know being professional when it comes to all your preparation all that sort of thing 
What would you, if you were Des Headland, just got drafted to Brisbane, number one draft pick, what would your advice be to yourself back then if you could redo it all? Oh, plenty, mate. Plenty. It's like uh, everything in hindsight, right? But, yeah, look, it's just about the work. It, like, you got here on pure talent, but that alone's not going to get you too far, right? It's about yep. all the... It's about all the... You know, what, I think it was, was either Vossi or might have been Leper. Well, it might have been Lee. I can't remember which one it was, but, you know, the saying that champions are built from what you don't see in, in terms of, you know, what you, like that. what you don't see in the background at their own house, you know, in terms of how they're doing some yoga and, you know, at 10 p.m. at night when no one's seeing them, just get a bit tight in their back, for instance, right? Or you know what are they eating? And you know, so behind closed doors, that's where champions are made. They say so. If I had that mindset coming in as a, a 16, 17 year old, and I think this day and age, kids are taught that pretty early, and um, and I think for the for the better. And um, yeah, it would have been something something special, mate, if that ever happened. But look, I'm I'm happy for what I've done in my life, and Absolutely. I don't live with regrets, and um, I always look back and. Sometimes I look up at the wall at home and I see that premiership medal hanging up and I think, oh, well, that, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then uh, what are you up to now? So you're a CEO of uh, your own company, Spartan First. You've got the shirt on right here. Uh, tell us a little bit about say, everything you're up to now. Yeah, so we set up Spartan First five years, years ago. Cl Clinton Wolf, our chairman. Who um, also played for Freemantle. Yeah, he's well, an inaugural docker. Um, he, he come, he's a brainchild behind... behind um, the initiative and um, occupational health was is our core business. So we do a lot of the pre-employment medicals and um, you know, the pre-screen before you go on a mine site or construction site. So we work with, with the mining clients, construction clients, government, defence, just to make sure that when they employ someone, they're fit for the role, mm -hmm. don't have any reoccurring injuries. So we try and break away workers' comp issues for our clients. And But if they do get injured on site, then we do all the rehab um, return to work assessments with our phys physios and our doctors and our nurses. So. Yeah, great. Yeah. And then how many? How many? Um, uh, what's the setup like? How many places have you got around? Yes, yeah, so we've got seven. Uh, soon to be um, over in Brisbane in Bowen Hills. Mm. Um, yeah, we're about to branch out on the east coast, which we're pretty excited about. And and we've got a dental clinic in Subiaco as well. So busy yeah. man. And then you're telling me as well, you've also got um, a foundation that you uh, that you do lots of work with as well for school scholarships. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm an ambassador for Madala. So Madala is a, a scholarship uh, for Aboriginal kids, boys and girls, and adults, um, tertiary and secondary um, students that are going to to private schools here in Perth, and also and can some country towns, and also. Um, you know, university um, scholarships as well. So we we have we have kids from you know up through Wyndham in the north down to Esperance in the south and everywhere in between that are, are down here boarding at Hale or St Bridget's or Guildford Grammar at the PSA school. So you know Medala stands for making a difference and looking ahead. So we believe that those 450 plus kids are our next generation, our community. They're going to be doctors, nurses, and yeah. Some footy players, but uh, you know, school teachers and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, so it's amazing. It's awesome work. And um, are you getting into any of the Freo games lately? You've been rocking up and watching any. I've or? been been the first couple. Yeah, take, taking a few clients to a few of the games. And what do you reckon? I don't think they've. I don't know what. Well, they won a game at home yet? Uh, I but think they've, I've been there once. I think yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm okay. starting to forget the song a little bit, but <laughs> it's um, yeah, I'm pretty sure actually West Coast the Derby. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the Derby, the Derby. I, did, I watched that. and Didn't realise that they had seven injuries that day. So I was like, yeah. they, they it's always good. At least West Coast yeah. is doing a little bit shitter than Freo, which is I'm always <laughs> I'm always as long as it's just a small amount, small then I'm happy amount, with yeah. it. So <laughs> yeah, no, they were actually. I think it's good for the waffle at the moment. Everyone's getting you know, not not happy with the AFL teams. So they're heading down to watch their yeah, local yeah. waffle teams. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I think Subiaco is getting a bit better crowd at the moment so yeah yeah exactly yeah. well mate thank you so much for coming on down you're such a busy man and thank you so much for um taking uh, an hour out of your uh, super busy schedule to come on down and uh, do the episode with me full circle moment i'll send you the bill yeah. for the for the football Absolutely. card collection and uh, thank you so much for joining right, me brother. thank you thanks, thanks mate. mate good to see you yeah. thank you